Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the April event of our SalesPad webinar series for 2024. My name is Elizabeth Morris. I'm the event manager here at Cavallo. Um, many of you are already aware, but we've had some really great webinars so far this year. We have a lot more good content coming out the rest of the year. Um, we definitely encourage you to visit our events page that lists all of the webinars. Um, and you can register right from that page for any of the remaining webinars throughout the year. And you can also view any past webinars. Um, so that uh, website is www.cavallo.com slash events dash schedule. Um, so for today, today the format will be a 30 minute presentation followed by some time for Q&A. Um, so feel free to ask questions at any point throughout the webinar using that Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. And uh, Mike will do his very best to get to all of them at the end. Um, just want to remind everyone that today's webinar is being recorded, so you will be able to access the recording afterwards. We always post them to our YouTube channel as well as that events page. Um, so it'll be nice and easy for you to share with any colleagues who um, maybe would have enjoyed the webinar. Super excited to have Mike Radin back with us this month, Senior Sales Engineer with Cavallo. Uh, Mike's going to help us unpack the various integrated shipping options available to use with SalesPad. So without further ado, I'm going to let Mike take over and introduce himself and get us started. Yeah, thanks for kicking things off, Elizabeth, and for the light introduction. So just to repeat a few of the things Elizabeth mentioned, for those of you I haven't had the pleasure of working with, my name is Mike Radin. I am a senior sales engineer. I've been with Cavallo for two and a half years now. I went to Grand Valley State University, which is right up the road from our headquarters here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and I studied management information systems and marketing. Some of my favorite hobbies include hiking and visiting national parks. I'm going to be going to the Grand Canyon in just a couple of weeks here. I also really enjoy playing golf, and I've gotten really into pickleball over the last few years, and I'm starting to share that with some friends and family, so it's really cool to see a lot more people picking that up. So for today's agenda, um, I want to talk about some API updates we have that impact some of our shipping solutions. For all of our current customers, you guys should have received multiple um, notifications um, regarding this, but I just wanted to touch on it since it's relevant to today's topic. Then we'll talk about why Cavallo integration for some of the different shipping solutions out there. We'll do a little introduction to our different shipping solutions. I'll jump into a demonstration showing two of those. And then we'll, of course, have time for questions and answers at the end. So again, like I said, we've sent out a lot of communication around this, but just wanted to make everyone aware of some UPS and FedEx REST API updates that are impacting some of our software. So if you do ship via UPS or FedEx and Ship Center, um, that will require an upgrade to Ship Center or if you use the address validation for either of those carriers in SalesPad Desktop, that will require an upgrade to SalesPad Desktop. For any customers that may have some custom related to these carriers in your SalesPad environment, um, hopefully you've already talked to your rep, but if not, please, please reach out to your rep so we can um, just double check and make sure that everything's gonna be good there. Um, the date for the FedEx um, end of support is May 15th, and for UPS, that will be on June 3rd. After those dates, the carriers will reject calls to those APIs. And I've just included um, at the asterisk at the bottom of the screen that latest Ship Center version and the sales pad version where those updates are included. So why a Cavallo shipping solution um, versus other integrations? So with our solutions, you can say goodbye to issues such as shipping via different mediums um, or your shipping management requires input from multiple systems. Maybe you're doing duplicate data entry. You have to manually write back information. That information isn't currently syncing or integrated. That can be time consuming, um, lead to errors, other issues. Um, your shipping tracking may be fragmented or unreliable. And in that same tone, customers have limited visibility into the status of their shipments. So with the integration, writing back all that information, we can make sure that nothing is missed. And then with the power of workflow and sales pad on top of it, we can always do that smart printing to send out emails that contain the tracking information and then do that confirmed shipment for your customers, hopefully saving your CSR team from some calls from customers um, looking at the status of their shipment. 
So let's go ahead and jump into talking about the different integrations. So the first one I wanted to mention is our FedEx and UPS connectors. This product has been um, referred to as ship to in the past, but really refers to our connections to UPS through WorldShip and FedEx through Ship Manager. This integration will update your shipping information like freight and tracking um, on your sales docs once that shipment's complete. You can create and print those different shipping labels from that tool. And of course, you then have the ability to track your shipments from within the tool. So this is just a little screenshot at the bottom of how that connector kind of looks in selecting that document to populate through World Ship or Ship Manager. Second integration is Ship Center. So Ship Center is Cavallo's built shipping application that integrates directly to SalesPad. And it supports parcel and LTL shipping. But I want to clarify, there is a little difference in how that's used within the tool. So USPS, um, UPS, and FedEx will generate shipping and tracking information, as well as book that shipment um, while providing labels, whereas the other um, carriers and LTLs will more so support rate quoting. So we can get that rate quoting to you, but actually booking that shipment would be done outside of the tool um, without doing custom. You have the ability to connect scales to Ship Center, so you're accurately weighing packages. You can create different package types and templates that can be reusable. You have the ability to map those back and forth between sales pad and ship center. So whether you're doing your packing before you get to that shipping step or during the shipping step, um, all that information will be ported over for you. And of course it integrates with a workflow, which is really helpful in helping to auto forward, do those smart printing jobs, move it to the next step in your process for you um, right upon completing that shipment. And in this bottom table, just some different information for the supported parcel, LTL carriers, and then those different USB scales that are supported and tested. The third integration we have is with PaceJet, who is one of our third party partners at 3G. So this integration is a cloud-based packaging and shipping platform that integrates with ERP systems and adapts to your business. They have expansive LTL support for over 60 carriers and they also do the managing of any changes or in linkages and rates from year to year. So that's all being managed directly by PaceJet for you. Some of the features within SalesPad are um, most obviously the ability to create that PaceJet shipment within SalesPad. You have the ability to map in user-defined fields from SalesPad. So things like an account number or shipping preferences are things that you could map to even user fields within PaceJet. Always gonna have the ability to rate shop. So every carrier that you're set up for will appear when you go to rate the shipment. So you can quickly compare those rates and make sure you're getting the best price. There's a lot of tools within the PaceJet application itself, um, such as freight auditing, which can help identify areas for potential savings. A lot of other reporting and neat things you can do within PaceJet that someone um, from 3M could def 3G could definitely speak to better. Um, so if you wanna get in touch with someone from there, we'd be happy to do that but you have the ability to sync quotes, shipments, and void notifications back and forth between PaceJet and SalesPad. So we'll just go ahead and jump right into the action of showing some of these integrations and hop into a demo. So let me switch gears of which screen I'm sharing real quick. All right, so now that I have SalesPad pulled up, I'm just gonna start from the point of creating an order, moving it through the logical steps in my workflow and getting it ready for that point for it to be ready to ship. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new order for one of my customers, Aaron Fitz Electrical, use my Z order document type. So this customer has a default shipping method, which is something that we'll see as we get into Ship Center. That based on the shipping methods we have selected in SalesPad, we have the ability to map those to specific carriers and services within the Ship Center so that we can default that shipment. So let me just go ahead and add an item. I'm just going to add one item for simplicity here. I have this MacBook Air item. And I'm going to go ahead and release my order. So it's going to move through all my normal queues. I have to go ahead and pick and fulfill this order. Normally, I'd go into Inventory Manager to do that. But um, for time's sake, I'll just go ahead and manually fulfill. But there's an example of my pick ticket that was printed. I sent an order confirmation. So now I just have to pick this order real quick, do it manually here in SalesPad. 
And now that that's fulfilled, I'm ready to go ahead and release this into my um, shipping queue. And much like a lot of our integrated products, we use a specific batch or queue to let us know that it's ready for that next step. So I'm gonna exit out of this order real quick, just so it's not locked over in Ship Center. Ship Center is a separate desktop application that integrates directly with SalesPad. So there's different configuration and, and setup you can do here to build out the different carriers you're gonna be working with, the package templates that you want to be able to select from, and you can map in those different shipping methods so that they correlate to your shipping methods in sales pad. And shipping sources is really just the setup of different dock types that you might be creating shipments from um, to be able to handle those just a little bit differently. So I'll go make sure I have my Z org selected. This is refreshing every one minute. You can always refresh manually or have it do it as frequently as every 30 seconds, but this will be representative of everything in my shipping queue for my Z order document type. So I'm just gonna go ahead and double click that order that we just created. By default, that's gonna go ahead and bring in all of my shipping information. So I can see that for this specific customer, I'm using my account. It's pre-populating my account number. I can see that FedEx um, ground service type was selected by default. So I don't have to go ahead and make any changes there. If that's the default shipment I should use and not actually rate shop, I can just go ahead and start building my uh, package template here. So I'll select a small box. This is just a list of configured options that I have. You could have many more in a live scenario. And then I'll want to go ahead and do that actual movement of that item into that package. So I'll select that MacBook line, send it to my selected package. And because I am maintaining item weight and package weight in SalesPad and Ship Center, it's automatically calculating that weight for me by combining those two and populating it here. If I were to be using a USB scale, I'd be able to go ahead and click this icon here, actually set the package on the scale and get that very accurate weight. Um, so now that my one item is packaged, I'm ready to go ahead and actually get that rate. I can click here on the shipment amount, which will go ahead and do that rate calculation for me. And I get my price back and I can go ahead and hit finish shipment and this will process the shipment for me. Um, if I did want to look at other rates and other carriers and services, I could come up to this actions button here, go ahead and click compare rates. And that's gonna pull up all the different configured carriers and services that I have in my ship center instance. So I can see FedEx, um, stamps.com, UPS test. So I could scroll through here, look for the best price, which without including some of the USPS, it does look like FedEx ground is my best rate. So I'll just go ahead and keep that on this order. I can then go ahead and hit finish shipment. So one of the steps I have in my process is to actually automatically print the label once I've processed that shipment. So I'll be able to pull that up here. So this is just a sample label. Obviously I'm connected to a demo environment. So it's showing me that's a test label, but we can have that automatically printed. I just, in my instance, had it save as a PDF rather than printing. So I now get that message that this has been fully shipped. So now if I come back to sales pad and follow up on that order, go ahead and close out of this. Go to my sales monitor. So that wasn't our shipping queue. If I go ahead and refresh, I'll now see that order 50 is in my ready to invoice queue. So once that shipment was fully processed, it auto forwarded that in my workflow. So it also went through this Z ship plus queue, which for me, that goes ahead and sends out a um, confirmation of the shipment. And then I can now see that I also have that tracking information. You um, can see that in the status here, TRK. But if I go ahead and click on that order, I can see the tracking number. I have added that to my layout here in additional properties. I can see that freight cost was captured here. And there's also a couple of tabs where I can also see the tracking number. And then all the shipment detail is now written back to my shipment tab. I can see that package I have, what items are there, the shipping weight, cost. And then if I was using something like EDI, after I process the shipment, I could go ahead and send out the ASN with this information. So want to show another example of another customer that 
perhaps has their own account and that's what they prefer to use. And that's kind of the agreement that you have with the customer. So we do offer um, through the use of UDFs, you can map that information directly to Ship Center. So I've created a couple of UDFs that I then map in through my settings in Ship Center. So I have an account number here and the account option set to recipient instead of my account or third party. So let's go ahead and create another order. And we'll go a little quicker this time. Let's select that iPhone, go ahead and forward. It's my pick ticket. Go ahead and have to fulfill this again. iPhone happens to be a serialized product. So you can see the list of all the different serial numbers I have here. That's now fulfilled. I'll release it to shipping. And so we're gonna to wanna to look for that account number and account option when we go over to Ship Center. To refresh manually. Order 251 is now available. Can pull that open and then we'll see here for the account number and the account option that mapped over the account number that was stored on the customer and the account option. So go ahead and add a box here real quick so I can pack this item. And then I'm actually gonna change this back to my account because I will get an error since this is not a real customer account. I have to use my demo account before I can actually process it, but that will work for a live account if you have those agreements set up with your carrier. So now I'll go ahead and rate that shipment once again. It's getting a message that I don't have negotiated rates with my demo account. I can now go ahead and finish shipment. Once again, that's going to automatically forward in my workflow. Once that finishes printing that shipping label. Now that's automatically forwarded. So that's really the option um, within Ship Center if you want to um, do the packing there. But you can also do the packing ahead of time, whether you're doing that through your warehouse management tool or just doing that directly in SalesPad. So I also want to show what that scenario would look like. Um, then also, I'll just show a quick example of what that shipment confirmation email can look like. Um, this is just a template I've built out that has some of the customer information, thanking them for their order. And I've attached that tracking number with a link so they can go ahead and click on that, um, be able to follow up and track that on their own. And then you can also include different reports. So I've just included a copy of the customer's invoice in that email as well. So we'll just stick with um, West Central Distributors, but I wanna show off a couple other piece of functionality with Ship Center. Go ahead and We'll just add that same item I did on that first order, another MacBook, go ahead and hit save. So there's some things you can do, like do a little bit of rate shopping before you actually get into Ship Center. If you wanna quote that out for a customer or you just wanna look to see what the best rate is likely gonna be before you um, get there. So maybe you can set that as the sales rep or customer service rep doing the order entry. Uh, maybe you don't want to give an option to choose a different carrier um, at time of shipment, you can predetermine that based on doing that rate shipping um, kind of ahead of time or rate shopping rather. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fulfill this so I can pack it here in SalesPad. And again, you could also do this in your warehouse management tool, but first I'm gonna go over to this tab here, Ship Center Shipping Calculator. So with Ship Center, this is a tool that you'd get access to. You can put in, you can use a template um, from your list, or if you have different packaging, you might want to try for simplicity. I'll just do 10 by 10 by 10 and do a weight of five pounds. Once I have that information there, I can go ahead and click get rates. And this is going to go and run through that same compare rates logic that ship center does. And it's going to pull back all those different rates for all those different carriers and services that I have. So I can look through this list and kind of find what the best price might be for myself. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just cause they had UPS ground selected already, I'll come down and select um, UPS ground here. So 2108, I can go ahead and highlight that line. And then if I want to set that freight on this order, I can go ahead and do that. 
And since it was already selected as UPS ground, it didn't ask me to update the shipping method, but it would otherwise. And then it just goes ahead and kind of pre-populates that freight cost. However, if there's any changes, once you actually get in the ship center, if you choose a different, you know, package dimensions, it actually weighs something different. This will overwrite when it writes back to sales pad. As far as creating the packaging ahead of time um, on the shipment tab, or again, if you were using that warehouse management tool, it would sync here as well. I can go ahead and create that shipment ahead of time. So I'm just going to add a new shipment, let a default number be assigned. It's automatically going to populate my carrier code and shipping method. But now I can go ahead and look at my different package types. Again, I'll just use a default number for the package. And then I have my template to look through for items. So I'll go ahead and select this um, medium box for this order. It's going to pull in all those default dimensions. I can go ahead and click OK. And now I can choose to add a specific item or add all unpacked since I just have the one item. I'll go ahead and click add all unpacked. And now if I want to, too, I can calculate, recalculate the weight. Now that I have that item packaged, it'll take the weight information from the item master and populate that there. So now that I have all that information um, saved here on the order, once I go into Ship Center and this is synced over, I'll see all this package information pre-populated so I don't have to build that out in Ship Center. So I'll go ahead and release the order. It's now in my shipping queue. Go ahead and exit out of that so it's not locked. So brought over all that information as I expected to. And then if I just click the items tab, I'll see that my item is already packed in this package. I can see my weight carried over all of my different dimensions. So if I had already done all the weighing and everything, I'd be good to go. Just rate this order. Um, once again, I'm gonna have to change this back to my account. Uh, else I'm gonna get an error that I can't use that fake account. Um, now I can go ahead and hit finish shipment and it'll use all that information that I had already preloaded, kind of save me a step here within Ship Center. And now that's shipped, I can come back into my sales monitor, do a refresh and I'll see all three of those orders I just created are now fully picked, have the tracking number, Freight costs attached to them and are in my ready to invoice queue. So now I'm going to go ahead and switch gears and do a demo of our integration with PaceJet, which, which once again has um, a vast uh, support for LTL carriers. So if you are doing a lot of LTL shipments, it could be a great solution for you. So I'll go back and just use the same customer I had selected already. I'm going to change my order type for a different workflow that is set up to work with PaceJet. Keep things simple and boring. I'll use the same MacBook item for this order. And I am gonna go ahead and save the order. One of the things I wanted to touch on with our patient integration, especially um, if there's any customers that are currently using it on the call, in one of our most recent versions, 5.4.4, we've included a new um, setup option to be able to do shipping method mapping within uh, PageJet integration. So if I navigate to my settings, Type in PaceJet. It'll be this new setting under PaceJet sales documents in the newest version um, where I can actually go ahead and do that mapping. So this is very similar to what it would look like on the ship center side as well, but I can choose my different shipping methods I have set up in GP and sales pad and map those to the corresponding um, carriers and shipping codes that I have in PaceJet. So I just have these three simple ones set up for FedEx ground, um, USPS library mail, and then UPS ground. So knowing that I have UPS ground selected, I should expect that to um, populate when I get this over to PaceJet. So I'll go ahead and forward this order. So there's my pick ticket. I'm showing a preview of my order confirmation, something I could email to the customer. I'm now in my picking queue. So I'm gonna go ahead and once again, do this manual fulfillment.
then I'm going to forward it. And in this workflow, I happen to have a separate step for packing. So I'm now printing out a packing slip or doing a preview for my demo purpose. And I'm now in my packing queue. So just like I can with ShipCenter, I can go ahead and build out the package ahead of time here in SalesPad. So I'll just do that to show what that would look like, but you could also do it directly in PasteJet. Um, so I'll just, again, generate a package. Um, use this medium box template, has all that information. Now I can add all unpacked items. I'm gonna recalculate my weight. So that carries over once I do this um, syncing with PasteJet. So I'll go ahead and save that order. So there's really two options for getting this order over to PasteJet for use in the browser. You can build that in as part of your workflow, which is how I have my environment set up. But like all our plugins in SalesPad, you can also run those um, directly from a plugin on the order. So that's what this process shipment um, button would do. But again, for the purpose of this demo, I have it built into my workflow. Once we're done with packing, I want that shipment to be automatically created. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit release. So it can take a couple seconds here as it's communicating through the API to create that shipment. So that was my auto forwarding queue running that plugin. And now this document is in my shipping queue. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, PasteJet is a browser based shipping solution. So I'm gonna go ahead and log into my account. Again, a lot of awesome reports and different things you can do here within PasteJet. Uh, get someone over there would be best to speak to it. I'm just gonna kind of stay in my lane here. Um, so I'll go to the shipping workbench where I'll be able to see all the different shipments I've created or any of the orders that I have synced from SalesPad. So I can see a list of orders here, some that I've already probably shipped, but that order 188 that we just created is at the top of the list. So I'll go ahead and hit this ship button, which will pull me into this shipping screen. I can edit a lot of different data pieces here. By default, we pulled in that UPS ground um, carrier and service because I had that mapping set up, but I could go ahead and choose from my different options if I wanted to make any changes. I did map in that user account number to this user field, um, different fields. I didn't put in a customer PO number, but that will also map over. There's a lot of things mapped by default. And then we also support some of that um, user defined field mapping. My package information pulled over the weight and dimensions from my shipment tab in SalesPad. That box type I use is not a box I have set up here in PasteJet, so it didn't map that container type. Um, but otherwise, if you had those, those matching, that would. Um, but with the dimension and weight information, it's gonna accurately rate the shipment anyhow. So I'll go ahead and hit rate, rate shipment. It's only gonna come back with that result for UPS ground because that's why I've already defaulted the carrier to. So I can see that that cost would be $19.26. I can now go ahead and hit ship to book the shipment here in PasteJet. Um, I will just show kind of what that um, rate shopping view looks like. If I clear out my carrier service, I can now go back into rate shipment and it's going to give me an option for all of my connected carriers. So I don't have it currently linked to very many LTL carriers that are, are set up with actual accounts. But if you did, you would see a lot bigger of a list here that you could choose between. Um, by default, it's highlighting my cheapest option for the specific item. Um, USPS and library mail isn't an option I have. So I'm just going to go back, select that UPS ground option that I had originally had. And now I'm going to hit ship. So that went ahead and completed the carrier transaction. I can see my shipping or tracking number right here, different reports that are configured within PasteJet. Um, you'd have access to see labels, open up packing lists, uh, print those out. But I'm going to go back into SalesPad. Um, there's a difference with how the integration works with um, PasteJet. Um, instead of automatically forwarding within our workflow, um, we have to make that connection and read that order back in with the shipping information. So I'll go ahead and close this order so it's not locked. We do that through the use of our automation agent tool. So if you do have the PasteJet integration, you'd have access to this PasteJet platform, um, but not necessarily any of the other automation tools unless you already own automation agent. But this automation allows you to do different settings for mapping. And then it has all the different types of imports and exports that you can run. So 
Um, if you're doing a void within PasteJet, if you have a quote using in-transit transfers, um, all that can be um, synced back and forth. But for this purpose, we're doing a shipment. So we want to do the shipment confirm sync. In a live scenario, I would have this running on an automation schedule where I could schedule this to run multiple times a day, every 30 seconds, every minute, as frequently as you think is, is reasonable for you to pull back those shipments. Um, but for purpose of demo, I'll just run manually so we can kind of see how quickly that goes and communicates. And that'll give me a little pop-up letting me know how many were attempted, how many were successful, and if any were skipped or failed. So uh, it took just about seven seconds there and only attempted that one. One was successful. So now if I come back to my order. I got to switch what I'm looking at here. Come back to my ORD type. I can see order 188 is still in my shipping queue. So that's another thing that automation is not automatically forwarding that. So what I like to do is set up an automation job to do that forwarding. But I want to point out once again, we have the tracking number, our freight cost, our shipment information is still captured, updated if any changes are made here. But now I actually want to go ahead and forward this document. So I like to use our automation agent batch forward job. So I have one that will look at anything that is in my shipping queue. And as long as it has the tracking information and freight costs, it's going to go ahead and let me forward that. So just run that. It should take a couple seconds. That ran. Now, if I come back to my sales monitor, do a refresh, I should see that move over into my invoice queue, which I did. And how that automation works is there's just a rule within my workflow. Um, so if it doesn't have that tracking information, so I'll just pick on this order, for example. If I try to forward this without the tracking and freight information, I'm gonna get a message that I'm missing that information. And so it'll stay in the shipping queue. So that automation can really just take a lot of that work off your team of actually moving things around. As soon as that data point is available, they'll recognize it with the automation job and automatically forward it for you. So go back to the presentation here and jump to the next slide. So throughout the demo, what did we achieve? What did we see? We were easily able to automate the capturing of our tracking, shipment, and freight information. Um, that includes the package information, have that all writing back and forth um, seamlessly. We incorporated the shipping process into our existing workflow. So we saw how automated processes can help keep moving things along and how like in an integration with Ship Center, that's actually doing that workflow forward for you because that is directly connected. And lastly, through both the tools that we looked at today, rate shopping to capture the best price and option um, was pretty simple to do and make the best decision for you and your business. So with that, at the end of the presentation. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mike, for that thorough demo. We do have a few questions, so I'm just going to jump right into them. Um, first, can you automate the packaging? So I don't have any more context than that. So this might need to be followed up on individually, but can you speak to that one at all? Yeah, I'll, I'll do my best. Um, so it depends what you're looking to do. If you're wanting to automate the packaging based on like the size and the quantity of the items, that is something that we can help with, with scripts, but it gets pretty complicated. If you have a lot of different SKUs, a lot of different packaging platforms to kind of build that logic out of where to put things, but we can help with that process. Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. And then I think this question is kind of along the same lines. In fact, um, we got an example here. So when you're packaging orders in ship center, is there a way to set a default master carton for an item? So for example, if I have an item that comes in master cartons of 10 units and an order is for 100 pieces, is there a single click option to pack into 10 master cartons? Okay, it's a lot taken there. Um, that's definitely another area where you could use scripting to help that process happen automatically. Um, but based on the way you have it on the order, um, you could probably break it out in a way that would make packaging it that way uh, much simpler, but that's something I'd probably have to follow up with um, to, to fully understand that that use case and, and how we could best solve for that. Sure, yep, that makes good sense. Um, all right, another one. Does Cavallo have the option of shipping 
of a shipping department merely scanning the order and having the shipment come up in sales pad, or do they need to go through the menus like you were showing? Um, so I don't know exactly what menus um, you're looking to avoid um, having to use. Um, generally with Ship Center, um, if you're using that for your shipping, um, you want to be in a specific batch or queue that you're going to read it into Ship Center to do that processing. Um, but there's also options for creating shipment details directly within SalesPad where you would be able to utilize a scanner, um, scan an order, start processing that shipment if you want to do like the packaging and packing in SalesPad. Um, but again, that's something we could follow up on if that's not answering your question exactly. All right. And does Ship Center or PaceJet support international shipping and all the paperwork that goes along with that? If so, is that paper paperwork sent electronically? Um, that answer has some variation to it based on carrier. Both Ship Center and PaceJet are capable of um, handling and working with international shipments. It, could be differences between both and between different carriers of what exact documentation you have to send. But um, within Ship Center, I didn't go into that part of it, but there is a shipment options. Um, and based on what carrier you have selected, there's a lot of different detail you can put in um, regarding different international shipping options, different customs options. And that will get sent as the shipments created and processed. Thank you. Um, last question, are you able to do reporting on shipping data? Yes. Um, so I know in PaceJet, they have a lot of different reporting options. And then as far as Ship Center goes, there are some built in reports within the Ship Center application itself. But all of that data is going to end up living in the same database as your GP and SalesPad data. So through Quick Reports and Dashboard Designer, you're going to have access to all of that information, be able to marry that up um, and do whatever kind of reporting you'd like to on that. OK, got one more that just popped up for you, Mike. Um, mm -hmm. is address verification available only with Ship Center, or is this available with desktop and ship two? Uh, this company in particular, they are hundred percent UPS. Yeah. So, um, no, that doesn't necessarily require, um, Ship Center. You can use FedEx or UPS address validation in, uh, sales pad without Ship Center. Okay. Um, because we have time, I'm going to hit you with one more. Yeah. Um, does Ship Center allow customization of shipment labels per customer? Um, yes, you would have some ability to um, customize those labels. The ones that are coming from the carrier directly might have less options for you to customize, but you do have the ability to build out different reports. If you're thinking like a, a BOL or any other kind of packing documentation you might want to include, there's a whole report manager within Ship Center that would allow you to customize and configure those, those forms. Good to hear. All right, one more. Can you set up flat rate shipping for certain customers? Yeah, that would that would be something that um, we potentially use scripting for. And this is something I didn't touch on um, within the presentation today, but even with writing the freight costs back, there's a lot of flexibility there, um, whether you wanna actually charge that back to a customer, whether you wanna include some different charges on there or use a flat rate shipping, you definitely have the ability to do so. Awesome, okay. Looks like that's going to conclude our questions for today. Um, very lively group here. I love it. Um, so first and foremost, thank you, Mike, for your time and sharing all of this important detail. Um, thank you to all of you for joining us this afternoon. We definitely hope to see you next month on May 16th uh, for a webinar dedicated to quick reports. Um, so Kevin LB will be with us from our uh, professional services team. We're going to dive into key features and useful dashboards and learn how quick reports can help keep you you keep a pulse on the health of your company every single day. Um, if you would like to explore your organization's specific needs further, or if any questions came up between um, the end of the webinar and you know in the next day or two, feel free to let us know. Contact your account manager. Um, or simply just scan this QR code on the slide. Um, it'll take you to a short form and you can complete it um, with your questions and any details that you're looking for and we'll follow up with you guys. Uh, lastly, there will be a very short survey, three questions long when you exit the webinar. We would greatly appreciate your feedback. Thanks again for joining us and we hope you have a great rest of your week. Yeah, thank you everyone so much.